ToyTractorTimes.com is reporting from the 2012 National Farm Toy Show Display Contest in Dyersville, Iowa. We're with the winner of the 2012 show, John Schomburg, from Fall River, Wisconsin. And John, congratulations on your win. Uh, what can you tell us about your display here? Thank you very much. Um, this is, would be the Wisconsin, Central Wisconsin Potato Harvest. Uh, typically, it would start taking place at the beginning of September. Uh, in theory, here this is about the, about the second week of September. We've got uh, Rovin Farms out harvesting the potato crop. Um, <clears throat> we've got three three crew sets here, uh, three harvesters. We have two pull type Lockwood potato harvesters with uh, two four row wind rowers running ahead of them, uh, taking four rows and laying them on top of the, the primary four to be harvested. So the harvester is then taking eight rows at a time total. Well, our, uh, our Gullenberg self-propelled harvester is having two wing rowers ahead of them when rowing four on either side onto the primary four to be harvested for a total of 12 uh, rows of potatoes. So for non-potato people, it's kind of like somewhat like when you're forge harvesting hay that you wind row uh, to condense the crop Absolutely. to, to you're, the harvester. You're, you're, you're basically merging over four rows uh, over into the furrow just to speed along the efficiency of, of harvest, but also to try to minimize the bruising within the harvester from the potatoes bouncing around and not uh, yeah. getting bruised what would spoil them. So what model tractors do we have here on the first crew running through the field? This one here is an 8660 Massey. It's actually a generation two. It's been greatly uh, customized. Uh, hood seams, new, new paint, the correct paint. Uh, but more importantly, the cab glass and also the addition of uh, the deaf fluid tanks and the whole remolding of the fuel tanks, which were completely changed in the Generation 2s. In addition to that, there's a larger muffler on them. Um, so, and also one point I'd like to point out with all these is that all the tractors have got the drivers in them. Uh, I really like to thank Jared Turner for helping me out with that. Uh, it just seems to be the only thing to do now with displays is to have drivers in the tractors that need them. It looks very good. I mean, it's amazing to look at your Lockwood uh, wind rower here with all the chains and conveyors. Yeah, these two Lockwood 5000 wind, wind rowers were actually built and started when I was stationed in Iraq. Uh, funnily, funny enough, they're probably the only farm equipment in 64 scale that's ever been built in Iraq. Uh, I, I did send them home to finish them out and they did get shipped all the way from overseas and uh, they did turn out quite well. On the 474H potato harvesters here for Lockwood, we've got uh, eight 295RT track tractors. They're both the same tractors on, on both harvesters. What's, in, what's unique about these 474Hs is that they've got a holding tank on them, which allows the trucks to be swapped out and the harvester to keep moving and not have to stop in between the loading of trucks. So once, uh, once this truck is full, the unloading boom will be, be turned off. Uh, this conveyor here, however, and the whole system will keep running and fill up this tank here, allowing the trucks, the empty truck to come in and uh, for the harvester just to keep moving. It's greatly sped along the harvest. Uh, and you can see it's got a live bottom on the truck to absolutely blow everything out. And this, the hold the tank uh, also allows on the turning of the, of the headlands, once the potato harvester turns around and lines up with the rows, he doesn't have to wait for the truck to get underneath. He can just start going right away and allow the time for the truck to kind of get around the headland too and come in underneath the boom. And what model truck do we have up here? These trucks were uh, our International 7400 trucks. They are based off the CXT crew cab pickup trucks uh, that were came out several years ago. They've been cut down to the day cab versions uh, and obviously customized, repainted. The frames and the tires are off a matte granite dump truck. Uh, I really wanted the, the front wide steer tire on them. Uh, the Sputnik boxes were made by Mitch Corienta several years ago and were on my 2005 planting display. Uh, they're just outstanding pieces. The back doors open and uh, they're just a great build. I think it's really neat how you have all the, the vines and everything dropping out here. Yeah, right it's, on the harvester. What, what's great about that for me is that I've never, uh, previous to this, never had any potatoes or dirt or vines in these harvesters. They were all shiny and you know basically new after from building. So it's great to see them in operation in terms of being dirty and having the dirt and the potatoes coming up through them. And it just adds a whole other dynamic to looking at them. Um, so surprisingly enough, the dirt and the dust is is refreshing to see on them. And I like your sign here. I guess we just show the front of the display. Yeah, this. Uh, 
it's called the 10 mile field display. The 10 mile field is actually the name of the field that I grew up in that my dad farmed and uh, it, was, it was called 10 mile because the creek that runs along it for the length of the field is called 10 mile creek. So hence the field name is 10 mile. And it's also a, a potato, a field that's had potatoes in it for the farm that I grew up around and it's had various other crops and, and uh, it was the last field I saw my dad alive in. He was working on the irrigation system and that's the last time I seen him. And I, in fact, at that time too, they were planting kidney beans in the field that day, back in 2009. Um, down here we've got the Beeler 2425, uh, along with a safety tow system on it. All the trucks uh, have got the hooks in the front to be pulled by the safety, safety tow. That replaces any chains, straps, or rope uh, for when a truck does get stuck. It's, it's probably the slickest system for pulling trucks or equipment that is stuck. Uh, what happens, can happen quite often in the central sands of Wisconsin is the sand gets real soft, especially after the digger comes through, it's lifting up all that soil and just loosening it all up. So when a truck does get full, or even sometimes even half full, they can get stuck and hit a real soft spot and bog down. So the four wheel drives are typically, tractors are in the field anyways, just using, stomping down the vines uh, to keep from wrapping around the drive shafts of the trucks and kind of compact the soil just for the truck moving through the field to be a little smoother. Well, that's really neat also to see a blue Abula Versatile, which was only made for a very short time. Right, they made approximately 110 of those tractors, uh, and that is the same tractor I had in my 2005 display that it was carried over as there's just a handful of pieces like that on here. So farther down the field, we catch up with two more international trucks. Right here we're showing a truck that's almost full. You can see the doors up on the side. The side doors go down. They want to drop that boom all the way down to the to the center of the bed to minimize any drops of the potatoes. Uh, hence the reason for a side door. So they'll do a first level of filling trucks and then once that's full they'll put up the side door which goes up hydraulically. Okay. Uh, I guess we see the empty one here. Right in the back the you'll, see, you'll see the door down. Uh, that door will go up and then they'll do the, the second Final, final layer of potatoes in the trucks. Uh, and also if you will notice there's a orange, uh, in, in, in theory, a PVC pipe on our chain mm -hmm. hanging from the boom of the harvester. That allows the trucks to line up and to look at something in the mirror to allow them not to go in too far and hit the boom but also not to sway out. Uh, just a reference point for them to be in the center of where that, that uh, the unloading boom will be. Very detailed. And then we catch up with another Massey. Right, here we have another Massey. The only difference between this one and that one this is, is that this is the 8670. Uh, on the Massey tractors, there's not a lot of them sold in the state of Wisconsin. Usually it's, uh, there's different model numbers that are at the dealerships on the lots. So I just thought it would be really neat to have two different model numbers that were probably bought real close to each other but at different times. And we can see down here the fuel in the def tank with the blue. Right cap. on this side here you can definitely see the, the remolding. I had to cut all that out and uh, scratch build a, the, this, this very unique shape of tank that the ACO decided to put on the, the current generation of Massey tractors. That's well, very impressive and I wanted to point out the detail of your potato rows, so the unharvested part where you have the um, irrigation pivot, uh, the tires have cut across here, which is impressive. Right, uh, the, these rows are, this is from a rug, and this rug has got obviously what works really well for a hilled potato row. Uh, the spacing is very close to correct for 36 inch row scale down to 64 scale. Uh, these were obviously laid on here. I measured out where I wanted and kind of got everything uh, configured out correctly. Um, then I took the irrigation system and moved it across and so this irrigation system will actually swing through and line up with all these these wheel marks almost exactly. So I've had to I had to mark them all, cut them, trim them to make everything fit. And then from that point, once I got all the the rugs laid in the part where I needed to, I had to do two series of, of painting. I had to do the the paint in between the rows that I injected, and then put dirt on. And then I had to hand paint all the rows to kind of show the vines, which the fabric of the of the rug um, simulates the vines. Uh, from the potatoes. So it's well, a, a, a two, a kind of a four-part series to get these rows where they're at. I also like to have the grass and weeds um, you know, from the fall pressures. Right, exactly. Up. There's lots of weeds that still come up and what's interesting is at the end of the rows here you can see where the cultivator, row crop cultivator kind of lifted up at the end and also the sprayer shut down so you don't get near the, the coverage and usually there's lots of weeds that kind of just grow on the ends 
of these potato fields yeah. like this. That's a neat detail. And then uh, I want to look at this international uh, semi truck here. You can see that each of your trucks have the safety tow hook uh, mounted into the bumper. Exactly. These trucks have been sitting on for quite a few years and in, in waiting to have uh, these 30 foot potato boxes uh, made for them. Fortunately, a, a very good friend of mine out of Maine, Dave Desjardins, uh, Spinland Dave on Toy Talk. He was very kind enough to help me out with making these boxes and this just did an extraordinary job. And uh, he really took on a tough task uh, and a new task for him of making the doors, uh, making the doors go uh, up and up and down and fold. Uh, that he was, it was a difficult task for him, but I think he's pretty, very rewarded with it and, and uh, they just turned out great. I, I did finish them out a little bit for him with some decals and some other minor touch up. But, and these uh, are Lockwood trailers? These are Lockwood trailers, which uh, Lockwood years ago made boxes, uh, then they stopped. But uh, a company out of New Brunswick, Canada uh, started making them again and there's been some sold in Wisconsin. Uh, they're just not too popular yet, but they are around. Well, they look impressive. And so I guess your trucks are coming up and out of the field onto the, the road area and right. then um, they're coming across here to a former sweet corn field to a processing site. That's right. And one point to back up here, these trucks here, they've all, all are numbered and all have the Roman Farms logo. But in, in addition to that, they've got the USDOT numbers of the potato farm that I grew up around. So it's a nice little uh, yeah, we'll zoom in connection there. back home. So here we find truck 13, Roman Farms. That's correct. So uh, yes, as Jason was saying, these trucks are they're getting har they're harvesting in the field, they're filling up, and then they're coming across the road to a, a field that was probably harvested sweet corn in, in somewhat in, somewhere in August. And uh, what happens is some a couple of the growers in the state, the larger growers, they plant earlier than a lot of the other growers, so then they start harvesting earlier. Well, uh, companies like McCain Foods out of Plover, Wisconsin, and such, they uh, they'll take field direct loads from these growers, and so. The, the farmers will set up a, a cleaning line in an adjacent field or even the same field sometime if they have the room and just clean the potatoes right in the field and put them in truckloads and haul them directly to the processor. In, in this way the processor can get the factory up running uh, and take out any bugs before everybody else starts harvesting and they want the full operation going on. Usually after a sh somewhat short period of time in September, you know, I, 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 the rough guess would be anywhere from a handful of days to maybe over a week um, that this process will then shut down in field and then this grower will probably ship right to their own potato storage uh, buildings while everybody else in the area is also now starting harvesting potatoes and feeding the processor equally for their shares of going direct processor direct. Well, let's look at this is I mean a huge huge setup here and a very impressive build. Absolutely. So you want to walk us through it or? Yeah absolutely the trucks are coming in out of the field uh, here you see another 7400 that's dumping uh, the pota potatoes in what is called an even flow. It's basically a holding tub, a holding hopper for the potatoes and allows two things to happen. Uh, it's an even flow you know, that'll allow a steady continuous even flow of potatoes to the dirty laminator and the cleaner but also it allows the trucks to empty faster and, uh, and just dump and go. They don't have to go with the speed of, of the cleaner and uh, of, of, of the loading crew. So this is powered by a Hydro 3048? Right, yeah. Hydro 3048 would, Hydro 3048 would have been a, a potato farm track that was used on a harvester years ago. Uh, the hydrostatic IHs were very popular in the state of Wisconsin for potato farming because they allowed you know, indefinite speed variation uh, for the harvesting and they're very popular. Uh, so this is kind of a old tractor that the farm had that's been repainted up and still on the farm. You see a Generac PTO generator that's powering the even flow. While on the other end, as we'll see here, is, is a cat generator powering the uh, the dirty laminator and the and the bend piler. These pieces here, the, the even flow and the dirty laminator were made by a good friend of Gordy Schultz. We kind of teamed up together to, uh, to, to make those pieces happen. As well as the, the conveyor that you see sitting off to the side. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll take their straight conveyors, which they use primarily for in the buildings, and they'll put them in these lines too, just to have more people sort through the potatoes and pick out any trash to clean up the, uh, the potatoes before they go to the, the factory. And what was used for this uh, tread um, to come up the... Gordy actually scratch built all those pieces to get that tread design. And wow. then there's uh, no other way around it. That's what needed to be done. Be Gordy done does either. nice work. So now we got the potatoes filling into right. the even flow bin. Right, exactly. And then from there you can see them going to the dirty laminator or the cleaner. 
uh, they'll go up a conveyor and the whole time you know dirt's kind of falling off the potatoes just like they are in the harvester just not as much uh, to the center part here this is where the cleaner is it'll be a series of star rollers that are rolling the potatoes and kind of rubbing the, gently rubbing the dirt off them and then they'll go to the conveyors to kind of be sorted by people I mean people are hard to replace for what they can see especially potatoes that are cut or have any cut or damage to them they can take them out of the batch and then any other trash that missed through the cleaner but it'll also put down through the shoe and through the conveyors that go up to the Gullenberg uh, uh, potato piler here or the uh, planter loader that is filling the dump cart for the trash which will just end up going back to the field we've got a John Deere 4455 pulling the right that's a classic Roman okay. Farms tractor it's, you know it's just kind of like the Hydro 3048 the 4455 is uh, one of my favorite tractors of John Deere's and, and it'll probably always be on the farm and this is just kind of a miscellaneous duty that it, it can still serve on the farm and I imagine that's just like your 4020 Absolutely. The, the, the 4020 is sitting over here because what happens is that when they move this line, if they got to move it to another field or move things around, everything here can be towed. So uh, the 4020 is just one of the tractors that gets to tow things and move things around. So also you got a New Holland skid steer here. Right, the older, the older New Holland skid steer has a couple of purposes. You can see the guy standing there. He's still kind of pulling some, any trash that was missed by the whole other process line. He's pulling it out and he'll just throw it into the bucket. Uh, but also when the, the dump cart from the 4455 gets full, trash is going to continue to fall in a small pile and it just use the skid loader to put it back up in a dump cart, dump trailer once it gets back from dumping. So then we have um, get up to another elevator here and right. the cat generator. This is a, this is a, a Ben piler but it's used, being used to load the trucks directly. Uh, you see the cat generator that's powering the eliminator and the Ben piler. Uh, and then also the, the stand, you can see the guy up there, he actually has a, the remote control for the bend piler, which allows him to swing that boom left and right, up and down to fill the trailer uh, full of potatoes. And, and, the, and obviously the, the, the stand there allows him to see, to have a much better view to, to, to fill things efficiently. Uh, now also the orange trailer here, this is, once, this is Dave Desjardins, he was very kindly loaned me this, uh, this one of a kind scratch built Thomas trailer. Uh, it's, it's very it's very long and we and to be honest we don't have anything like this in Wisconsin but it's just such a nice piece and he was he, uh, he said that he would he would loan it to me so it's hard to pass up such a nice item to put on his, his display well it's impressive and I just also you know you have all this equipment going out here to you've got all the employees cars and trucks and right you can also see that we've got uh, the old honey bucket uh, porta potty that's available for, for any employees <laughs> Great benefits working at Roman Farms, right? <laughs> that's right. Here you can see some of the crew that's kind of uh, some of the managers of the field operation kind of uh, talking and, and uh, discussing the operations or the weather for the day. Who knows? And uh, you now this is a uh, fuel. Is this also for the death fluid? Yeah, absolutely. This, this is an item made by Adam Sunkton. It's, I, I wanted to have a piece of his, and it, it works great for, uh, for the, the display. Adam Sunkton and John Sampson were, were great uh, previous past displayers here and, and really progressed this hobby quite a bit in displaying for what it is. Uh, so it's great to have a piece from Adam, and it fits the farm quite well for what I need. Uh, and, and you can also see uh, the UTV down here by the uh, by the even flow which is made by John Sampson so it's good to have just a memory of a couple of those guys that are still around and for all that they've done for the hobby and in the past um, but the 90, the 9330 here now that was made by Matt Hollingshead he uh, was very kind to, to make that piece as well though, as well as the Wildcat 1000 that we'll see here shortly uh, they're just such an outstanding wonderful item I'm so grateful to have them they're definitely one of some of the favorite pieces in my collection from other builders and and the, uh, the baby Steigers are just a, a neat tractor, and you've got the safety toe on, on this one. Yeah, so it works great that, uh, to have two safety toes, and that tractor fits the bill just fine uh, uh, as well. So once again, I just can't thank Matt Holling said enough for, for making them for me. I'm very grateful. So we head back out of the one field and up onto the right. road. So here's one of the older 4900s. It's full coming over to, uh, uh, to dump into the even flow and the empty out. Uh, as we go over here, we'll start seeing the, the Gullenberg Potato Harvest crew. We've got a truck in waiting. Uh, this is the green box here. In all honesty, is the only box that I that I built myself on here. It's a double L, 30 foot box. I hope to build more in the future. And the, and I guess before we get to the harvester, there's another crop in Wisconsin that follows potatoes. Right, you get a we, double we, crop. we grow a great crop of stones, uh, and, and and it starts pretty much 
for the most part in the central part of the state, but and it works to the north. The farther north you get, it just really turns into being a, a very thick crop, if you will. Stones, they, they come up every year, and then, you know, it's all new in the next year, too. So, But you can see the, the rock digger, the Gullenberg rock digger in the background here on the Cat Challenger 755B tractor that I have built. Uh, and, and the guy, the guy's getting ready to move it. It's been parked there for just a little bit. He's got to move it so that we can have the, uh, the pivot system moved over. Uh, but the Wildcat 1000 is the background, like I previously taught, that Hollingshead has made, and it's just a spectacular uh, build of an item. And then the main event on this display, without a doubt, has to be the, the self-propelled harvester. Right. For me, this is this is the the centerpiece of, of what I've done here. This, this is a, a self-propelled Gellenberg uh, four-row potato harvester. Uh, Gellenberg was out of Anago, Wisconsin, for a number of years. Uh, they they currently are not making too much. There's a there's a remnant that has survived and is making equipment, some very good stuff. But uh, in terms of potato harvesters, they just don't get built anymore. They didn't build very many of these machines, uh, and the one like this in particular is still up in Anago and is being used by a seed potato farm up there that I modeled directly this one off after. The only variation that I put to this, my little own touch, was. Uh, a version of this harvest that was made later on with two airheads had a black engine housing. And I thought the black engine housing was really neat. I thought it looked a little bit more modern. So in theory, this would have been made between the two different real machines that exist. Um, I want to just show the everyone watching this video that just the detail of you've got uh, the wind rowers. We'll just jump up here a little bit. But the wind rowers, again, are, are pulling up the potatoes. Right. And uh, they come up the chains drop out and then um, they make a pile of potatoes uh, coming all the way down the rim row and right. then um, it's very faint up there. very faint to see the potatoes in the furrow here the dust from putting the dirt down kind of covering them up a little bit but they are there and of course the brown blends in but this Gullenberg potato harvester now we've got a lot of moving functional pieces here the boom will actually lift up and hinge up and uh, it'll move around to the transport position. We've got the, the truck and the driver indicator to tell them move forward or back, which just gets moved by the driver as indication to, to shift forward or back. Uh, it is all wheel steer, the wheels all steer. The primary digger bed will go up and down as the, all the other harvesters and wind rowers. Uh, and then the rock box in back does open and close. Yeah, I thought that was neat that um, you know, it has a, a nice little collection of stones. Right, the airhead on these are what separate the trash and particularly the stones from the potatoes, uh, which you can probably figure out on your own why that's a good thing to do. Uh, the potatoes will go up the side conveyor here and actually get sucked up, being that they're lighter than the stones, will get sucked up and dropped and bounced off a, a rubber uh, coated uh, deflection door here and bounce onto this potato, uh, onto this conveyor here. Then it'll go up to the trucks. Well, the stones will come through the back, go to the conveyor, and go to the rock box to get dumped. So it's a great thing to have in the state of Wisconsin. It is very popular. The airheads are pretty much the norm for the most part. Uh, it just depends on where you go and what the growers prefer. Well, that's an impressive bill of working parts. And I think the big question is how in the world do you get it down the road? Right, absolutely. They, I mean, it, just really the simple answer to that is that they just take it down the road. I mean, they, uh, uh, I guess the, the theory of yield to tonnage comes into play. I mean, if you're a small car, you're just going to probably be intimidated enough to move out of the way. And uh, I've, I've faced them coming down the road several times, going up and taking pictures. And to be honest, I just pull off into the ditch as far as I can or go right into the field because where are they going to go? So. Uh, uh, typically, they don't travel too far. Sometimes they'll have kind of a warning car with a beacon ahead of them just to warn you that something large is coming your way. And then we catch up to um, two more wind rowers. What models are these? Right, these are double L851s. They're a very popular wind row in the state of Wisconsin. They've kind of uh, tapered off of a little bit in popularity with the new ones being bought, but uh, uh, very good item uh, and they do well. well. The difference here is that we're double wind rowing which typically happens with self-propelled diggers. They'll do two sets of uh, four-row wind rowers. Uh, so they'll lay eight rows of potatoes in the furrows and for the harvester to take a total of 12 rows at a time. So when we look on the other side, they're putting eight rows, they're harvesting eight rows right. over there with the Massey and the eight RTs. Right, and one thing you'll notice is that the wind rowers are not running too far ahead of the, the harvesters. There are some growers out there that will run the wind rowers quite a ways out. 
but it, it's kind of the exception to the rule. You don't want the potatoes exposed uh, to sunlight or the, the warmth for too long. You don't want their, their bulk pressure to increase uh, prior to going to the processors. Not so much for the processor, but it's especially important for the storage of them. So they'll try to kind of keep just ahead of the harvester just enough to, uh, to have the wind rolls and not get in the way of, uh, of the digger. But uh, if the harvester has to stop and breaks down, they'll stop too. They'll wait until that harvester gets going again. Now, what uh, model tractors do we have pulling here? Well, we've got an older uh, 8220 that uh, has been kept on the farm now. Uh, it's, it's a modern tractor, obviously, but it's not ultra modern. And, and this is one of the, the main duties it does is just on a wind rower. And then uh, we've got a New Holland over here. Right, we've got a T8030. This would have replaced the 8970A on the farm. Uh, and that was on your uh, planning display. Exactly. That was on the previous display. The 8220 was on there, too. Uh, in fact, what I have changed in the 8220, just back up a little bit, is I have put a cab glass in it, as well as some tractor fab, uh, nice little step pieces, uh, that, as I think has really made the tractor even more uh, nice to view. Now, I noticed that these two tractors have GPS, and then do the Masseys, or is that just something that other jobs that they have? No, these the, the, the GPS... GPS on these two tractors just kind of carried over from their cultivating duties and some other duties on the farm they were doing. Uh, the Masseys don't have them. You don't, you don't need the GPS in, in for wind rowing. It's just something that we're, was left to attach to the tractor. Okay. It's nice to have the GPS on the harvesters for the most part because then the operator can pretty much focus on operating the boom and filling trucks. As we come back to where we started, we, we see the irrigation pivot. And uh, this is uh, a valley. And yeah, valley irrigation system here, which is very common uh, actually throughout the whole United States, but in, in Wisconsin too. You see the, the Roman Farm service truck that I've had for a number of years, and the, uh, one of the employees is getting out to start up the system just to move it over, to shift it over so they can harvest the rows where the pivot is. And uh, how many, uh, I guess this is an electric powered one with the... Yeah, electric power pump, well pump. Uh, pumps aren't always next to the pivots. Sometimes they'll be on the outside edge of the field and they'll pump the water all the way to the center of the field, but uh, in this case, it's, it's next to the pivot. And so how many acres does this long uh, span cover? The span here, uh, it, it's, it's kind of rough to answer that. Uh, it's a shorter system in terms of each span. Uh, ideally, it would be nice to have longer spans, but it, for the space limitations that we have here at the show, uh, it's nice to be a little smaller and get the look of something that's big. But in reality here, we're not really covering a whole lot of ground and not a number of acres. So uh, yeah. the service path is also just a very nice detail. Yeah, the service paths, you know, they, they get really compacted down, and when they get wet, you know, all, all the truck ruts going through, they, they are very evident on where the road is. As well, the, lots of grass grows up because the sprayer just doesn't really hit them uh, when, they're, when they're spraying the rest of the field, you know. So there's typically a lot of weedy vegetation and such that's, that just grows there. And uh, I guess as we finish up, I appreciate the tour uh, for all of our ToyTractorTimes.com viewers. Do you mind sharing the trophy that you received um, for this uh, excellent work? Absolutely not. I just thank the Toy Farmer staff uh, and the Shivey family. They always put on a great show here. I'm very grateful for this trophy. My good friend Doug Simon, whether he could have equally have taken it home, he, he deserves as much as I do. Um, but the judges make the decisions, and that's what it is. But uh, there's lots of great displays here, uh, lots of great work done. It. I'm very humbled to be a part of this group. And uh, uh, thank the Toy Farmer staff and also, also the, all the people and Jason Hazard at Toy Tracker Times for all that they do for us. John, thank you for sharing this, and congratulations. And thank we know you. it took you seven years to put this together, so we can't wait to see what you come up with the next. Yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll get to that point. I just want to thank my wife also. She's uh, uh, I couldn't have done this without her. She watches the kids, and, and uh, she's, she's really the pivotal figure on why this is happening. Well, thanks, John, and look forward to seeing you on the website right, soon. Thank you. Thanks.